The skull is made up of 22 bones, with every unique face having its own variation due to the environment that it was raised up in and every person having distinctive soft tissue facial features. So how do forensic scientists piece together the complicated puzzle of skeletal remains to develop an intricate 3D model of what the face looked like? The importance of facial aesthetics is found in a variety of disciplines, proving it to be a multifaceted science that is valued throughout both Eastern and Western culture. You may see the fruits of facial aesthetic research in physical anthropology, who look at the cultural nuances and differences between facial constructions across different populations. You may see it with plastic surgeons who operationalize facial aesthetics research to redefine the facial features of their patients. You will also see facial aesthetics research with psychologists who assess and continually conceptualize the link between cognitive psychology and perception with facial attractiveness. On top of that, engineers and data scientists use facial aesthetics research to develop artificial intelligence that can calculate and assess aesthetic ideals. And most importantly for today, forensic scientists use facial aesthetics research for facial reconstruction allowing them to identify deceased people whose skeletons have once deteriorated. Archaeologists also use facial reconstruction technology developed through facial aesthetics research, allowing them to create 3D portraits of people from the past, like ancient Egyptian mummies or even musicians like Bach. Today, we're going to look at how archaeologists and forensic scientists balance scientific rigor, supported by the extensive field of facial aesthetics and artistic interpretation to develop the most precise and accurate reconstructions of faces of the deceased. Forensic facial anthropology and science is the interpretation of human remains to attempt to depict the faces of the individual. In recent years, this field has come into light after the major natural disasters of the Boxing Day tsunami in Indonesia and Hurricane Katrina in America just a year later. With so many lives lost and bodies decomposed, years of facial construction surgery came into play to literally piece together humans. As macabre as that sounds, when you look at the human face, the unique elements of every single person can be daunting. Every human has their own unique skin color, hairstyle, eye color, nose shape, eye shape, cheekbone formation, jawline ratio, and so on. What is important to forensic scientists and archaeologists is how these facial features join together and then complement each other, which allows them to use morphological qualities of the human skull, for example, to piece together the puzzle of the human face. As stated by a seminal 2016 anatomical paper by Caroline Wilkinson, the mainstream method for facial reconstruction is through a 3D computerized technique that places facial sculptures over skull replicas, creating a facial appearance that appears somewhat living. As can be seen here, the 3D computerized model shown below by C is a step above the 2D sketches of earlier generations represented by A and above the clay-based 3D models represented by B. Conveniently, the reconstruction technique here involves three elements, namely anatomical modeling, so how the hard dentofacial structure looked, morphology determination, how the soft features looked, and the depiction of the resulting face. Let's run over each of these steps and the link to the mainstream facial aesthetics research that is the centerfold of Coo Studio. Remember, if not always, to like this video and subscribe to the Coos channel. I'm going to give you a 5 second break before I fry your brain with content. Firstly, there's anatomical modeling. Now, with only minor variations between humans, faces have a similar number of muscles, each with the same attachments and origins, and this similarity is what allows anatomy to be an evidence-based science. However, in relation to the skull, the size and shape of these individual muscles may vary between individuals, and the size and shape of these individual muscles have a direct influence on craniofacial morphology or the size and shape of the skull and face. The role of forensic scientists is to infer qualities about both the skull and the muscles surrounding the skull based on whatever little information that they have. As the muscles attached to the skull are intrinsically linked to the bones of the skull, having information about one element of the face can lead us to understand its complementary element and so on until we've discovered the entire face. For example, when the cheekbones are wide and heavy, the basis of the cheek muscle, whose scientific name is the zygomaticus major and minor muscles, will be placed further back in the face, and when they are narrow and slender, they will be based closer to the front of the face, 
Now, back to the earlier balancing act of juggling scientific research with artistic interpretation. It is clearly stated in the research that anatomical guidelines need to be followed to create reliable and repeatable reconstructions of a face. As such, there is no room in step one of facial reconstruction for artistic interpretation. All right, so step two, morphology determination or how the soft tissue sits on the hard tissue. This holds a similar evidence-based structure with little room for artistry as the rules for forensic facial reconstruction are so developed and tight-knit there is simply no need to put a subjective touch to the appearance of the reconstructed skull at this point. In this step, the bony details of the skull are assessed, and this bony detail is compared to the standards of anatomical principles, and hence the skull is pieced together. For example, when looking towards piecing together the eye region of the skull, the inner and outer canthi, or the medial and lateral canthi, seen here as the bones attached to the corner of the eye, are looked at in detail with reference to extensive dissection studies. Factors like the curves of the eyelid margins, the symmetry of the two bones, the angles of the two canthi, and their relative position to the skull are all considered. This process is as detailed as it can be for the eye, and it's repeated for the nose with considerable detail as shown here. Looking at septum deviation, nasal spine nerves, the bone aperture and nasal base angle, We've covered a lot of this already on the channel, such as nasal base angles, so you can go to that respective video. So the morphology determination continues, and it's completed for different elements with reference to lip shape, mouth, teeth, jaw, and everything else. By this point, the relationship of the skull to facial muscles is used to create a craniofacial structure, as referenced in stage 1, and then in stage 2, the positioning and sizing of that skull is detailed out, through the relation of the bony details of the skull fragments and the priorly defined standards of anatomy. To complete step two, there is an addition of a skin layer placed in relation to the skeletal and muscular model, using evidence to consider the tissue depth of the skin, the sagginess of the skin, and these are typically linked to whatever age you think that person would be. Deliberation is also used alongside comparisons to international data sets to incorporate the sex, ethnic group, and age of that individual that's being modeled. The final step of forensic facial reconstruction is to extrapolate the scientific findings so that the general public can benefit from the research. This third step is where you find the greatest subjectivity and artistic license to interpret the reconstruction as you'd like. Forensic experts, normally with only limited evidence to base their facial reconstruction off, typically find themselves struggling to objectively style the hair, skin detail, and facial hair of the skulls. Other factors that influence the recognition include whether or not they wore glasses, but unfortunately the bony details of the skull can't tell you that or anything else. As research from Wright and Sladden explains, these changeable features such as hairstyle, skin care, and the wearing of glasses can considerably affect the recognition level of these faces. One extremely important implication of this is recognizing reconstructed models after natural disasters, as friends and family may have trouble identifying loved ones if an individual's subjective characteristics have been wrongly interpreted. As such, even though this third step gives forensic scientists an artistic license for interpretation, it is still strongly in their best interest to be as accurate as possible. Regardless of the implications of artistic interpretation, some really common examples of depicting the facial reconstruction for public presentation include the representation of preserved bodies, like that of mummified Egyptians, the depictions of what disease and trauma must have been like for individuals in earlier centuries, and what also famous figures like classical composer Johann Bach. This third interpretation of forensic facial reconstruction is considerably interesting when you consider that portrait paintings were routinely completed of famous musicians, painters, and other important cultural icons. And these paintings can give reference material about skin texture, skin color, and the degree of facial fat to facial reconstruction experts. As such, the facial recognition technology for famous people in these earlier centuries is much more enhanced than those of common folk as forensic experts have that added level of hair and skin detail that is so crucial to the recognition of an individual. Overall, facial aesthetics research helps inform forensic scientists on how to model the skull, facial muscles to develop complex and accurate 3D models of these faces. By using aesthetics research, scientists can develop computerized craniofacial models. 
These models then become very important in history when we attempt to look back at the people of centuries before. It's also very important in evolution studies as we attempt to map out what our ancestors look like and where we came from. But perhaps most importantly, forensic facial reconstruction helps loved ones identify the deceased and this is why it's crucial that facial reconstruction is as accurate as possible. The three main steps of reconstruction are anatomical modeling, morphology determination, and depiction of models for viewing by the public. Artistic interpretation is used heavily in this third step. However, it is in forensic scientists' best interest to keep this interpretation as accurate as possible. So to leave you with some parting advice, if your face would ever need to be reconstructed in the future, then make sure you have lots of photos of you lying around. If you'd like to get your face assessed with 7,000 words of technical feedback, then I suggest that you get an aesthetics report over at the Coos website. Our team of doctors and dentists can help you identify what your strong and weak features are and how you can correct these to improve your facial aesthetic. Also, I recommend that you follow us on Instagram at Coove Studio, where we put out so much free content on celebrities, morphs, facial anatomical research, just anything we can't fit into a video goes there. So check it out.